Well, I'm poor. Do, 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 do. Road to Majority, Nashville, Tennessee, 2022. Earlier today, this man stood in front of a crowd of would-be Christians and would-be patriots to uh, talk out of his would-be ass. Oh, God. Oh, my God. He's just going to stand there again the whole fucking time. Good Lord. Hold on one second. I got to open this. There we go. Just making sure this. Hello. I'm on a lazy Susan. Take your pictures. I'm just standing here till the song is done. What the? F that is so weird. Hello. Uh, hello. Uh, hello. Seriously. If Biden just stood out there while a song played like that, they would they would call him demented. There now he can move. What do you get cleared to did he get cleared to move in his earpiece? Yeah, that the song ended. Then he can walk over. Oh, Thank good. Thank you very much. <laughs> Faith and freedom. The only uh, difficulty he has is that they didn't put Save America up there, so he can continue to grift off these folks. And I guess. Okay, there. I don't know what the weird shield is. Are we not supposed to see what his legs are doing? Is, is somebody rubbing his calves for deep vein thrombosis? Well, I want to thank you. What a beautiful turnout this was. And Ralph, for your extraordinary leadership and unyielding commitment to our values. We have great values. Oh, yeah? Name one. I want to thank Ralph. Freedom and, uh, what was the other one? It's an F word. Freedom and, f freedom and faith. Sorry, it's written on the teleprompter. I should not, I almost said fucking at the Christian thing. It was an incredible job, and I'm thrilled to be back with so many proud, hardworking patriots who love our country, cherish our history. This is, Sam and by the way, it, this is his equivalent of uh, Nashville crowds are the greatest crowds in the whole wide world. Toledo crowds are the greatest crowd, right. And live by those timeless words of our national motto, in God we trust. Together we're yeah, going yeah, fuck that e pluribus unum garbage. We're going to fight for a future that is pro-family, pro-faith, pro-freedom. And profane. Pro-life, pro-police, pro-Second Amendment, pro-science, pro-woman. Prophylactic. And 100... <laughs> Prolapsed anus. Present pro American. <laughs> I want to thank Faith and Freedom Coalition Executive Director Tim Head. Does a great job. <laughs> American First Policy Institute President, our friend Brooke Rollins. Thank you, Brooke. Thanks, Brooke. Thank you, Brooke. Mm -hmm. Great work. A friend of mine, Dr. <clears throat> Alvita King. Dr. King. Where is Dr. King? Scott Turner, really dynamic guy. Young guy, big future. You have uh, neurosyphilis, abnormal walk, gait, numbness in the toes, feet, or legs, problems with thinking, such as confusion, poor concentration, mental problems, loss of batter, control, tremors, weakness. I think that racks up, adorable one. The many spiritual leaders here today, including Pastor Paula White. Oh, Pastor Paula White? Mm -mm. Oh, get the Jesus in the thing and get the Jesus in. Like the body hit the floor. That's her, right? Apostle Dwayne Harden. Apostle Dwayne Harden? I, I'm sorry. I, I've read the Bible twice. I don't remember the Apostle Dwayne. <laughs> Bishop Garland Hunt Sr., I know your son. I just endorsed your son and he won big, by the way. He's great. What a great son. What a great son, as sons go. Pastor Adderlet. Pastor Mustard. Hebrew. Pastor Potatoes. Bishop Dean Nelson. Dr. Stellar Emmanuel. We have incredible people. Kevin Creasman. Pastor Dale Walker. Oh, get over yourself. Pastor Dallas. Speaker and pastor and believer. He is just something very special. Pastor <laughs> Jensen Franklin. Where is he? And countless other conservative leaders. Thank you. Get on with it. Ladies and distinguished guests. It's really been 
an incredible group. You're all very distinguished. You were on fire and someone distinguished you. And you know, politically in the audience, we have some wonderful people. Senator Tim Scott. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, the guy who wants to sunset Social Security. Great. Senator Lindsey Graham. Tim Scott, who's phenomenal. Governor, oh, this guy. This guy. Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson of North Carolina and his wife, Mrs. Robinson. Here's to you. What a job you're doing. He's the hottest guy in politics. <laughs> Great job. What a beautiful job you did. And thank you for all the help in North Carolina. We had a big, big victory there. Right? Thank you very much. Man. Thanks for rigging the election for us. That's the code. Senator Joni Ernst. Thank you. Oh, yeah, she's good for uh, oh, uh, values. Joni. Senator Bill Haggerty. Okay, get over yourself. With all these lights, I don't get to see so many of you, but this guy was too, who's been with me right from the beginning. He made a statement once, I'll never forget. I said, who is this guy who was on television? He said, you know, this guy Trump, he may not know the Bible as well as some of us. In fact, he may not know it that well, <laughs> but he's a big believer and he's a great leader and we're going to be very happy with him. And I'll never forget it. I wasn't sure. Yeah, it was, I mean, I'm, I'll never forget it. I mean, I'm ballparking on what he said, but. Should I be insulted or not? But I, I, I hope so. <laughs> Robert Jeffers. Thank you, Robert. In addition, let me express my tremendous gratitude to each and every one of you. The Faith and Freedom Coalition is the front line of defense for Christians and people of faith in America today. What a job they do. And I tell you, it really is an incredible thing that you've done. And you look at this audience and the people outside trying to get in. <laughs> yeah, it's just like the, whenever the audience is small, he's like, yeah, there's a huge line. They're not going to make it. <laughs> they should just give up. I mean, I, I, a lot of them have faith that they're going to get in. No. no organization worked harder in 2016 and 2018 and 2020, and no group is working harder now to deliver a landslide victory this November. I think we're going to have numbers like perhaps they haven't seen before. You mean because you're not on the ticket? Over the next 145 days. Wouldn't that kind of suck if they did have a red wave and he wasn't part of it? That's kind of hilarious. Days. It's not going to happen, but... You will knock on an astounding 8 million doors of Christian and pro-life households. And, and, and apparently walk by houses that aren't? 27 states. Are they, is it about sufficiently Christian? Reaching 15 million voters. In addition, you will make 10 million phone calls, send 25 million text messages, and distribute voter guides to an incredible 100,000 churches. That's a lot of churches. With your help. Yeah that they shouldn't be passing out. We're going to ensure There's a guy photographing Trump. That's they uh he gets paid to do these to show up at these things and it goes into the Save America fund and he just uses it to pay bills. We're the biggest midtown. This is going to be the biggest turnout in midterm history. We think Yeah, it certainly is going to beat while you were in office. Without question and it's going to have conservative Christians all over the place. <laughs> They're going to be all over the place. I mean, except the crazy QAnon ones who aren't going to vote because they think there's a chip in the ballot that gets, you know, injects bandages into their neck. Everyone in this room is gathered here today because we're all committed to the same key beliefs and the same core values. We believe that the Declaration of Independence and the American Constitution represent the principle of human civilization. Our founding documents are not a source of shame. They are a source of great pride. We believe the United States of America is the greatest and most virtuous republic in the history of the world. Look, look at him just like, like cock-eyed, like cocking his head rather, trying to like, I got to get through this. This is a lot of text. This is, there's a lot of writing on this thing. This is, so I got to say all these words to get paid. I'm going to keep it that way. We believe in law and order. Yes, you, your lawn must be in order. They are the HOA 
of the of the majority. And we know that the Constitution means what it says. Yes, it says, I am a Constitution. As written. Yeah, uh, well-regulated militia. That really stands out to me. We reject censorship blacklisting and <laughs> yeah that's why i was censored on truth social so culture because we know that the lifeblood of a free society is free speech we don't have free speech very you're talking to a group that is trying to outlaw pornography and uh pornography includes the even written erotica so i'm just just letting you know somebody should run up and whisper in his ear whenever he like that's not these people don't actually believe that shit. Very much in this country anymore. <laughs> if you don't have free speech, you don't have a country. We know. Well, a lot of countries exist that don't have free speech. I mean, the UK doesn't technically have free speech. Canada doesn't. Australia has different rules. Know that religious freedom is the foundation. But thanks for saying that China and Russia and I guess Iran and a few other Hungary even aren't countries. <laughs> that should be the headline from this. Of all freedom, because we know that our rights and liberties come straight from the hand of our creator. We believe. That's right. That's right. All I have to say is Jesus-y stuff, and you guys clap like circus seals. We believe that America is a sovereign nation with a sovereign people, which means that we must have a strong, secure, and sovereign border we don't have a border we don't have free and fair elections we don't have a country <laughs> we don't have a president we have some asshole in florida St oh that's me sorry i, I read i read the, uh, the part backwards i left this sentence we up. believe that the first duty of government is to protect and defend the interests of our own citizens in other words we have to put america first I, I have to say, he does not seem excited or comfortable. This seems like a high pressure speech. Either they're paying him a shit ton of money, but he's got to deliver certain points and that's been negotiated with, with Save America or the, the Jan 6 committee and, and what's happening in New York and Georgia is stressing him the fuck out, which it clearly is. It might be both. We believe that America's destiny depends on upholding the Judeo-Christian values and principles of our nation's founding. Like what? And above all else, we know this. In America, we don't worship government. We worship God. <laughs> yeah, points, points. Yes, yes. They, government buildings are not called churches. You're really onto something there. Again, I, I, I understand how some of these folks feel about, you know, just kind of gov uh, th this big fear, especially around welfare, that government replaces the, you know, the, the father or the nuclear family and that kind of stuff. This, they've been worried about that for a long time. But like who worships at the altar of government? Why does anybody think that's um, <laughs> right? He's gripping that podium is the hooker from Police Academy under there. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's just selling these tags. I don't understand. Like, they really, they love that one. I've heard many people say that. I'm like, it's a constant refrain, refrain from uh, Republicans. They, we don't worship government. We worship God, which is just like, it's an, it's like us. It's like the Holy Spirit of straw men. Great quality. Good, good, solid. Yeah. Oh, big empty floor there. That's interesting. It's relatively full, but not that big a deal. Certainly not the rally crowd he's used to. I mean, obviously, there's a huge line outside, but they just ran out of chairs. Is that what's up? Because that's, I got to say, that's pretty fucking sparse for something like this. Trumple Stillskin's volume is too low. Okay, I'll, I'll bring it up a little bit if I can. I think this group likes God a lot. Jesus Christ. These are the values that sustain. 
I think this group likes God a lot. <laughs> Sounds like something he said backstage to somebody right before he went on and thought he was saying something astute. <laughs> you guys, if I'm not mistaken, I think there's some God lovers out there. Let me hear you people. T-shirt cannon. Foom. <laughs> In our movement, and these are the values that sustain our nation. But today, each of these principles is under tremendous threat. A threat like never before. Yes, like never before. Yes. Religion, free speech, they're all just being decimated in a way that has never happened in the history of America or a free... Oh, you mean... Uh, as far as free speech goes, uh, Lenny Bruce's ghost would like a word. Everything we hold dear, every fucking Louis C.K. won an won a Grammy for his album last year. Give up, get fucked. Last tenet of American tradition is under merciless assault from the radical left. These people are taking a sledgehammer to the very foundations of our free society trying to destroy freedom of speech, trying to crush organized religion. You know that. Why? How? And by the way, you don't need any help destroying organized religion. It is eating itself. The megachurch movement among uh, is the biggest factor in the killing of sort of your middle class churches. Trying to shred our constitution, trying to demolish the rule of law, and even attacking the rights of parents to raise their own children the way they want them raised. How? The only thing that anybody has a problem with is the stuff that happens at school. They might have an argument about that. You have the kid the rest of the time. There can be and have been, <laughs> this might shock people, uh, interesting cases where a teacher said something at school that was counter to reality or counter to uh, the beliefs, uh, faith beliefs even, of, of children in history of, of, since public education started. And you know what the parents did? They corrected that in their parenting with the child. So I don't know who the fuck is, think is, is raising their kids at school in a way that is so powerful that the parenting that's going on at home can't override it. As I've said before, the greatest danger to America is not our enemies from the outside, as powerful as they may be, and they get more and more powerful because we allowed that to happen. <laughs> oh, you did? During your presidency? Oh, that's true, actually. That is true. The greatest danger to America is the destruction of our nation from the people from within. From the people from within. Okay. And you know the people I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. I know exactly who you're talking about. The Jan Sixers. The maggots, the people who stormed up there and tried to interrupt the... Oh, it's a different... I'm sorry. I was... <laughs> that is why this November we're going to stand up to this left-wing fascism and we're going to take back our freedom. We're going to take back our country in November. Well, obviously... Are you, are you announcing your run for Congress? Wouldn't that be fucking sweet? If he looked at how much like money MTG makes and was like, you know what? I could be a congressman and I wouldn't have to have to do half this shit. I don't even, Jim Jordan doesn't even wear a jacket to work. It's great being in Congress, you, especially or be a Republican senator. Get the fuck out of here. You don't have to accomplish anything. The radical left movement that is attacking our nation is driven by a spirit of anger and hatred that most of us can barely comprehend or understand. Yeah, yeah, unless you were one of the people that, you know, he ordered up the steps at the Capitol to beat cops within an inch of their life. Understand, did you ever see such hatred? Oh, toward us? yeah. No, I, I've been watching the Jan 6 committee. I, I've seen the videos. It's, it's pretty gnarly. Us. And all we want to do is a good job. We want nice homes. We want great education for our children. That's we all we want. We just want to live a quiet life of prosperity. And these guys just want to beat us with a... a, a uh, Black Lives Matter flag. We want strong military. We want strong police. We want not to defund the police. And you see what happens. And you see what happens. Oh, you mean 
where Biden just gave them like $40 billion. We also want low taxes. We want few regulations. We want okay, look, now they're starting to stack up. I'm beginning to think you're, 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 you're going to explain where the anger comes from. We also want women to have no rights uh, uh, and bodily autonomy. We also want to stop voting. We also want minorities to be kept where they're supposed to stay. We want so many things, all of which we had just a year and a half ago. <laughs> These extremists are consumed by resentment, envy, intolerance, bigotry, malice. Oh, and t uh, intolerance, not and tolerance. And even rage against nature itself. Rage against nature itself. That's a, that's a trans thing. This is not just a political problem. This is a spiritual problem. Mm, that's right. That's the soul. I'm, he's running to be America's pastor. Who wrote this? For the radical left. Politics has become their religion. It has warped their sense of right and wrong. They don't have a sense of right and wrong. Yeah, so how do you warp something you don't even have? That's the question. How did that happen? They did it, though. True and false, good and evil. You saw the Russia, Russia hoax that we all went through for two and a half years. I watched this at Well, we didn't. I mean, you kind of did, but... Adam Schiff the other day, Shifty Schiff. Guy's nothing. <laughs> Uh -oh. It's nothing. We call him watermelon head. It's a perfect shape of that. How, how very Christian. But I watched him. I watched him for two and a half years stand up at a podium just like this or stand in front of the press. It is terrible what President Trump has done with his relationship with Russia. I'm saying Russia. What the hell do I have to do with Russia? This went on for two and a half years. Oh boy, he's just, he's abandoning the teleprompter and, and, and the real gripe, the, the real like sweat break is, is catching up to him. We're at 1624. Okay. And it turned out to be a hoax. It's been now revealed. No, it hasn't. Some of the papers have already, some of the media has already admitted it. There'll be a lot of litigation. There's going to be tremendous litigation. <laughs> Two and a half years actually causing us danger aside from everything else, but causing us great danger. I'll never forget us, us. You mean your family? When this guy, he knew it was a fake story. I'll never forget when he stood up at the microphone and said, Donald Trump Jr. will go for, to prison. Think of this. Donald Trump Jr. will go to prison for what he has done to our country and for his relationship with Russia. And I said, what the hell is going on? Uh, do you guys remember that? Do you guys remember Schiff standing at a podium going, Donald Trump Jr. will go to prison for what he's done to this country and his relationship to Russia? Good Lord. Okay, we're, we're just seeing brain misfires. It's true. Now think of how bad a person do you have to be. You know it's a fake story. It was made up by him and Hillary Clinton and all these people, crooked Hillary. It was made up by these people. And you want somebody's son to go to prison for a story that you know is false. How bad a human being do you have to be? Think of it. And now they're doing the same thing with January 6th. They know, and it's the same people. It's Adam Schiff. The same words. If you just insert January 6th instead of Russia, Russia, Russia. And the media buys it, but not maybe as much as they used to because CNN yesterday, did you see what happened? They came out with a strong statement that they are prohibited, totally prohibited from using the term, the big lie. They are not allowed to use it anymore. You know why? Because they know. They are, what was this? It was uh, totally, what was, what, what did he say? Hold on. Big lie. Uh, we're totally. Big lie. Oh, hold on. Totally prohibited. Totally prohibited. Let's see. 
Now, this is Fox, so it might be bullshit. CNN stars continue use, using big lie term about Trump flouting new boss who prefers different phrase. CNN's Finding Jay Tab. Perfect oh, project wait manager. He's an easy. Uh, but uh, we found him. Uh, uh, um, let's see. Um, some of CNN's on air talent seem to be disregarding their new boss. Uh, Chris Lick said about the use of the phrase, the big lie Lick, who recently took over the network's chief executive following the ousting of scandal plagued predecessor Jeff Zucker, spoke on a conference call on Tuesday with top producers where he was asked about his opinion, the use of the phrase in the air. CNN hosts and anchors frequently refer to President Trump's as the big lie. According to Gravian Media Search, the term, okay, whatever. Fox Digital learned Lick is no fan of the term. According to an insider, Familiar with his feeling, he feels it sounds more like a hashtag or bumper sticker and is not precise for cable news audiences. Mediaite and other uh, outlets reported he's also concerned the moniker is used by partisan Democrats and that he preferred Trump's lie or lies about the, <laughs> the election. Jesus Christ. So it's it's not that it's a big lie. They, he wants them to say call it specifically Trump's lie or lies about the election. The key point came across today was that Donald Trump was perfectly aware he was telling the big lie, Jamie Raskin said on CNN this week. An insider told uh, Fox News that Lick did not issue a mandate or formal guidance to stop using the term. Totally prohibited. They're totally prohibited. Absolutely. Totally. <laughs> From using the term, the big lie, they are not allowed to use it anymore. They're not allowed to use it anymore. anymore. You know why? Because they know that the big lie is actually the big lie in reverse. We'll figure it out later. And they have great liability. They, they do, they have big liability. <laughs> and they don't want to use it, but they came down with an edict. They came down with a statement that was announced yesterday that we're prohibited, CNN no. is prohibited from ever using the term the big lie again. <laughs> no, they aren't. Again. I wonder why, I wonder why. We're getting closer, we're getting closer, but we have to fight some very sick and very evil people. Before they try to change our nation, the left-wing fascists need to change themselves. There's no clearer example of the menacing spirit that has devoured the American left than the disgraceful performance being staged by the unselect committee. I love that name, unselect. You know, they never, they actually act, you know, they hate it, right? But they act like there's nothing wrong because they just don't want it. They're very good at what they do. <laughs> they, they act like my little nicknames don't hurt them, but they do. They're all broken. They all fall apart. You know, it's, it's, it's like little Marco. Like he, he didn't, he, he acted like it didn't hurt, but I know it did. I know it. They're con people. They're con artists. I say the unselected is supposed to be the select committee on January, you know, like these people are legitimate. Every one of them is a radical left hater. Hates all of you, hates me even more than you, but I'm just trying to help you out. What the hell did I do? <laughs> what the hell did I do? Man, look at look at the fucking misery. This is amazing. I mean, I've, we've seen him grind before. This is this is next level. Like, he's disgusted about something. I don't know if it was something that just happened right before, or he's just in general. You know what I mean? You guys know. In the chat room, let me know. Like, this is, he, he seems like, that's why he hit on hate so hard earlier. The unselects, so I call them the unselects, and they act like, oh, they never mention it. I think it's one of the great, they never mention it. Yeah, they don't care. It's weird. I keep using this, and I think it's so brilliant, and yet no one gives a shit. It's actually, I have to say, one of the dumber slights that he's done on somebody's name or inversion of it. It's, I mean, like, even Crooked Hillary, is doesn't, there's no alliteration, you know, this, like it's just kind of lame. And even he, like shifty shift kind of works. They, I mean, even Sean Hannity uses that. There's uh, many, you know, most people believe that somebody else gave it that to him. But the, but in this particular case, like 
It's the select committee. I call it the unselect committee. I call it, they call it infrastructure. I call it disinfrastructure. It's that kind of shit. Someday they'll give me credit for that term. Yes, you can have all the credit for that term. Yes, no one is lining up to claim credit for that. Hi. Mm-hmm. You what? Oh, it's hot. Yeah. Why didn't you take my car? Oh, because you have all your stuff. My girlfriend's been working. All right, hold on a second. I have to give her a kiss. Excuse me. My butt twitched. Hmm? My butt twitched. I understand. I'm fine with that. Okay. <laughs> Pardon us. You can see my butt, but you can't see hers. Okay. You're very sweaty. It's true. This is not a good time to be driving your car around. We need to move. If you, and if you need, just let me move your stuff into my car. I'll do it for you. <sighs> yeah. Like I said, we can drive it over there and you can just, you know. We'll just put that stuff in my car and you can leave it in there. I don't care. Yes, so it doesn't melt. True. All right. Well, let me know after the show. I'll help. I'm that kind of guy. <laughs> Mwah. Her, uh, the, Summer's air conditioning in her car is currently out, which is not great in a city that's, uh, like, it's 108 today. I had a lot of good terms. You had a lot of good nicknames, didn't you? Yeah, let's go back through them. Remin, glory days, and blah, 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 young girls, eyes, glory days. Didn't we have great nicknames? Yeah, didn't we have great nicknames? Remember that? Remember, let's go back over all the great moments of my president's. In presidency, where I would just shit on people with petty insults. Remember those? I think this is one of the best. I don't know. It's not catching on because they won't let it catch on. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's the deep state is is running interference on his cute little phrases. It's not catching on because they you know they won't let it catch on. <laughs> Can you imagine being that paranoid and deluded? The unselects have shredded every standard of decency, fairness, precedent, tradition. Well, in, in all fairness, they are, uh, you know, in, in what I've seen, I haven't been able to watch every second, but they were all clothed. <laughs> Separation of powers, executive privilege and due process. Nobody's ever done this before. What are you talking about? This is mechanical as anything we've ever seen. They are knowingly spinning a fake and phony narrative and a chilling attempt to weaponize the justice system against their political opponents. Many of you are. Uh, many of you uh, perhaps are wearing an ankle monitor from your attempted attack on the Capitol today. In the room and you see people on the left that burn down cities, Democrat runs. Whole cities gone. All of them. Remember that city? Remember, uh, Democratopia, it is no more. It's like Atlantis. Cities killed people, nothing happens to them. Y yeah, yeah, it does. They go to jail. On the right, if you even were seen anywhere near the Capitol, in many cases, they put you in prison. No, no, there were lots of people. You even brag about the size of the crowd. There's like 600 people in prison. The Unselect's entire sham presentation is based on video that has been deceptively edited. Oh, okay. It's been deceptively edited. You can't see the smiles on the people who are yelling, hang Mike Pence. Misleadingly cut and even doctored. Oh, dear. They doctored the footage? They doctored Jim Jordan, who just left. He just told me they were... They doctored him? Really? Against his will? They were playing doctor with Jim Jordan. He should tell someone. They found something that he said they doctored it up. I think it was, oh, yeah. it was actually Schiff that did it. Yeah, he's got he's got a little like doctor bag that he runs around. They doctored up what Jim Jordan said. Jesus took Christ! The entire meaning out of it. Did they? Oh well, then I don't think he has to worry about anything if it has no meaning whatsoever. How can you? No one's ever been convicted of something that is you know meaningless. Otherwise, you'd be in prison for this speech. I said, good. You don't mind if I mention that, Jim, do you? <laughs> Let me pretend you actually said this. They're taking six, eight, and nine-hour depositions, and they're putting up five-second clips, making everybody look bad. They'll take nine hours' worth of depositions, destroying people, trying to destroy them. 
And out of the nine hours, they'll put up a five-second clip where they got a little tired. Yeah, they got a little tired and the truth squeaked out. They got a little tired. Yes, they keep playing these <laughs> these shots of Peter Navarro napping on the table. Uh, Pete, we got some more questions. Oh. Mm. They ripped completely out of context these statements in many cases to create an impression that's the exact opposite of the truth so that what you're seeing is a complete and total mm. lie. It's a complete and total fraud. And then it's what they don't say and the people mm. they don't interview. We, we send people down. What about this one? Interview this one. These are experts on election integrity. Yeah, that they're not talking about your election bullshit. They're talking about Jan 6. Again, I've said this multiple times. If you suspect your mate is cheating and you kill the person you suspect them to be cheating with, that's not legal whether they turn out to be cheating or not. You're like, but your honor, she really was fucking him. Like, that's not an excuse. You commit a crime, your reasoning doesn't matter, especially when it's extraordinary like this. Jesus Christ. I mean, this is amazing. Yes, yeah, Cyber Ninja is who he's talking about. They don't want to have them anywhere near. And when somebody goes off on the fact that the election was rigged and stolen, all right, that's enough. We're not talking about that. Well, that's the reason people went down to the Capitol. That's the reason that people went down to listen to various speeches, including one I gave. Remember the calm words I used? They try and make them sound like that was the calm. That might have been the calmest speech I think I've ever made, if you want to know. That. <laughs> I've had a couple of senators say, I never knew you could be so nice. Yeah, I think they were being sarcastic. But it didn't make any difference. No, nah, it didn't. I mean, it, like, tell them the part about you said where you're going to walk down with them. Tell them that part. And then you didn't. Because they have their narrative and they know that we're leading in every single poll, mm -hmm. both Republicans and Democrats, and they don't like that. So they'll do it any way they can. These are very vicious people, just like crazy Liz Cheney removed the part of my quote where I urge people to peacefully and patriotically make their voices heard. Think of that, compare that to Maxine Waters. You ever watch her? You ever watch her ranting and raving and go get them and fight them and you know what? And you know what? Is that what she said? She's saying you had to get in people's faces. She was trying to run them out of restaurants. Again, when that came up, I was against it, A, because you just don't do that, but also because this asshole has been, and, and those like him, have been weaponizing that shit forever. It's one of the reasons why you hold your tongue and remain civil, okay? And many others. Look at Pelosi, her statements. They're horrible statements. Horrible. Mostly while she was dancing. Look at Schumer in front of the United States Supreme Court. He sounded like a mob boss. <laughs> and they say, look, peacefully and patriotically. But look at Schumer. Go back and look at that tape. Frankly, Bill Barr, if he had courage, he would have done something about it. I suggested it. I suggested it. <laughs> but he was so afraid of being impeached, he didn't want to do anything. How do you not get impeached? Don't do anything. Don't do anything. The committee is taking the testimony of witnesses who defended me for eight hours, chopping it up and truncating sound bites to make it sound like what they said was absolutely terrible. He means Ivanka. But it's remember, it's also the people that weren't allowed to even testify that wanted right. to. Yeah, Eric wasn't. I mean, he. I think he did and played the fifth a bunch, but I keep losing track of all the test of testimony they have to give. A lot of people wanted to go and testify about what they saw mm -hmm. and how crooked it was. Meanwhile, the committee refuses to. Yeah, do they? Which, who's, who are those people? Please make a list. You read off a list of people at the beginning. Who wanted to go down there? Did Jim Jordan want to go down there? And then why is he not? Play any of the tape of people saying the good things, the things that we want to hear. Yeah, the good things. You know, the. They're going to shoot Pelosi in her friggin' dome. And uh, um, it, I mean, it wasn't so much that they said, hang my pence. It's that they, how melodically they sounded. It had a whistle to it. It kind of, it was lilting, I would say. It's a one-way street. It's a rigged deal. It's a disgrace. And it's never happened in the history of our country where we didn't have any, we have no representation. They say, oh, they have Republicans. Who are they? Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger, the crier, he cries every time he speaks. 
This guy's got a mental disorder. He cries. Every time this guy gets up to speak, he starts crying. Something, I said, there's something wrong with that guy. These are our representatives. Well, the uh, House Republicans put have, could have put other people on there. They just insisted it was people who were on the witness list. That's why they refused to release the full video or the transcripts, because we had so many beautiful statements. They, have no, they want nothing to do with them. Mm -hmm. They want nothing to do with them. Somebody got up and started talking about the election fraud that took place with proof. I mean, you know, they could call it science. They can call it whatever. You know, they have uh, a they thing can, called disinformation. They can call it science. They can call it whatever. Information. You can say something, doesn't matter, like uh, 2,000 murals. Did anybody see that? Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so he quotes or he references 2,000 mules in his letter. And he, he has said multiple times is the greatest movie ever made. That, and, he, and they had a, a launch for it at Mar-a-Lago, and Trump apparently watched the whole thing. And this is, I guess he's 100% buy-in. Can't be disputed. These are... <laughs> um, dude... Super easy to dispute. Ann Coulter would like a word. Watch my video. Government tapes with their stuffing ballot boxes, to put it crudely. They're <laughs> crudely, they're just jamming them the fuck in there. Stuffing ballot boxes on government tapes. And what did they say? <laughs> they go, oh, that was debunked. They never was, that was debunked. Yes, it was. Uh, uh, ably, and I would also say hilariously, by yours truly. Oh, okay. Most people say, oh, it was? Oh, I didn't know that. No. These are tapes. One, two. Guys, look it up at the camera. Let's see. Where's the camera? Oh, there it is. So the person was aware there was a camera there filming them, and they showed their face on it, and then they, what, came back again? No, no. These are tapes. No, they're, these are, listen, folks. These are tapes. And, uh... The government tapes. Their government. <laughs> they're, I mean, granted, they're uh, 24 hours a day for a month and a half, and they're cutting a little piece of, of people doing the, uh, the right thing all the time, and then they take one thing out of context. So you don't see the parallels between your complaints about the Jan 6 clips at all? No? And we should be thankful for, for truth to vote and... Dinesh D'Souza and all the people that did it. Big hit. Big hit. It's a big hit. Yes, a, a big hit to your argument, I would just say. But these are not, these are not uh, something that's made up in a studio. These were tapes that were taken and uh, Catherine oh. Engelbrecht, who's a Oh, motherfucker. If this guy thinks... If Trump thinks backpack guy is a real dude, I, he, I, he, he has to. He has to think that backpack guy, the footage that they made up, the, the recreation footage that, that Dinesh D'Souza put in there, that they didn't label as, as such, which the guy gets a credit in the end. Like the, the dude in the hoodie. Trump absolutely thinks that's real footage. I guarantee it. Woman and a great patriot spent thousands of hours with her group of patriots studying all of these government tapes that nobody in a really cool looking room. He ever studies because who's going to spend thousands of hours? But they did. <laughs> and they took out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, thousands of people that were rigging the election. And they'd go. <laughs> One man went to 28 different boxes. <laughs> no, he didn't. Putting six or seven. What's his name? What's his name? Where's the footage of him returning to one even once? Where's the footage of him going to more than one ever? Seven in each box. You can't put a thousand in. It doesn't work that way. Going to different places. And they got him. They got him. They have him cold. No, they don't. What do you mean they have him cold? What does the radical left say? Oh, yeah, I know that. Uh, yeah, that was debunked. It's disinformation. They don't, it's not debunked. can't be debunked. It can't be debunked. It doesn't exist. How do you debunk something no one has ever seen? Um, that's, 
Uh, it is what it is. Yeah, that's it. I mean, what argument do you need? We didn't make up they're not movie actors. If it was a movie actor, I'd say you got me. But these are not movie actors. The, the class. Here's, here's a good idea. Uh, show me one person going to more than one box. Got all this footage. Sh show me somebody going to more than one box. Show me them walking near one more than once. Classic is when they get out of the car and they're looking all over the place. You know, normally you get out, you vote. Yeah, 2 o'clock in the morning in Atlanta, you look around. These guys get out and vote. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Oh, that was fully debunked. Nah, this is a shame what happened. This is a shame. And because of that, look what happened to our country. Oh my God, such a country we were having. What happened to our country? The sham committee even had to postpone its scheduled hearing at the last minute so they could doctor some additional video and probably hire another movie producer like the guy from ABC who was the president of ABC. No, he isn't. And ABC fake news, you know that. And he was the president. And I guess he used to do tapes and documentaries and they put him in charge of making a documentary. The good news is very few people watched it. <laughs> yeah, uh, officially, I think people watched the, the, the alleged numbers on 2,000 mules are oddly in units of two, uh, 20 million apparently, which is horseshit. But that's the number of people who watched the first night of the Jan 6 committee. And not only are they watching the morning ones, but they're also watching the recaps at night on MSNBC. One guy got up and said that he heard me calling Mike Pence a wimp. Now, now in honesty. Uh, in all honesty, uh, he is a wimp. I'm the president of the United States. You know, I'm sitting, I, I think they sat at my desk. He's a wimp. How many people listen to me? It's like, I don't even know who these people are. <laughs> They're literally his lead counsel. They're literally staff. One of them is, fu is his fucking daughter. <laughs> Lafonka, who, she's, I, she's probably a Democrat who got me coffee. But I never called Mike Pence a wimp. I never called him a wimp. Mike Pence had a chance to be great. He had a chance to be, frankly, historic. Yes, he could have gone down as one of the greatest turncoats in American democracy. But just like Bill Barr and the rest of these weak people, Mike, and I say it sadly because I like him, but Mike did not have the courage to act. Bill Barr was afraid of certain things, and you know what they were? <laughs> we you mean being disbarred? Please don't impeach me. Don't impeach me, Bill Barr. Please. I said, what's wrong with being impeached? I got impeached twice and my poll numbers went up. <laughs> I don't want to be impeached, sir. I don't want to be impeached. The election was perfect, sir. It was perfect. It was so good. The election was perfect. And the Democrats are sitting back saying, no way we're going to impeach this guy. <laughs> nah, it's terrible. But Mike was afraid of whatever he was afraid of. Yeah, I, I, that's probably true. Spiders, heights. But as you heard a year and a half ago, Mike Pence had absolutely no choice but to be a human conveyor belt. He was a human conveyor belt, even if the votes were fraudulent. They said he had to send the votes, couldn't do anything. I said, well, what happens when you have more votes than you had voters? Does it matter? It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, nothing matters. <coughs> Detroit, see what happened there? Philadelphia, U.S. attorney in Philadelphia came out and said Bill Barr would not let him get involved in election fraud and he wanted to. Mick Swain, a good man who I think was destroyed by this. Yes, so many people in your past have been destroyed by your bullshit. Um, also, um, Barr brings this up specifically in the Jan 6 uh, video that they had posted, but it's been said over and over. And anybody who looks at what Rudy was selling, we, we looked at all this shit, R what uh, Mike Lindell was talking about. Um, they used the primary voter numbers versus and who, you know, people who voted in the primary versus people who voted in the general and said that the 
the number of people who voted in the primary was the baseline of the amount of voters in the area in Detroit and other places. And the people who voted in the general, which is always a higher number, was any number over the number of people who were voted in the primary was proof of fraud and that they were dead people and whatever else. He was not allowed to look at election fraud because the Republicans were afraid. Mm. They were afraid of Terrible. the consequences. Oh, the Republicans. But came out and everybody said that send the electoral votes immediately to the old broken down crow named Mitch McConnell. Oh. You had to send them. He's the old broken down crow, bad guy, bad politician. He wanted my endorsement. He was getting his ass kicked. The people of Kentucky liked Donald Trump. And I like them. And I was leading by a lot. And he came to see me. He was losing. Kentucky has a Democratic governor. Losing by two to somebody named Amy McGrath, a good politician. She had $93 million ready to go. He's down by two and he's going to go down all the way. And he comes over to see me and he practically begs me for an endorsement. And would I do a television commercial for him? I didn't like him that much. But I helped him out and I got him elected by more votes than he ever got before. <laughs> And I totally got him elected. Everybody got more votes than they ever got before. Mail-in voting works. He would have lost. In retrospect, I wish I ran somebody in the primary against him, but I still would rather have him probably than a Democrat, barely. But, barely. But, so what happened is they were emphatic, emphatic about Mike Pence. In other words, ready? He had no choice, no matter what. He had to send those votes. He had no, there is absolutely nothing that he could do. I right. said, well, what is he, a robot? I actually came up with the word conveyor belt. I thought it was a better word. In other words, it's a conveyor belt, it's two words. Let's put him, he's a human conveyor belt. He had no choice. Okay, that's good. He had no choice, I'm saying, well. Then I see a small group of rhinos plus Democrats are right now and have been for a long period of time working feverishly for legislation to make sure that the vice president, whoever it may be, can never do what they kept saying that Pence and a vice president can't do. So they said he couldn't do it. Yeah, they were worried that some asshole like you would take advantage of the ambiguity in the law and try to do this again. So they're just clarifying the language. That's a check your terms of service every time you update, you know, your iTunes or any of that shit. They, there's always some weaselly asshole who tries to find a gap and they have to close a loophole. That's what they're doing. Had no choice. It was 100%. It even happened with this guy, Ludig, whoever the hell Ludig is, a former judge. And he was saying Pence had no choice. Mm -hmm. Then why do they want legislation? To clarify it so nobody tries it again. So that a vice president can't do. No, that clarifies that the vice president can't do that. And all I wanted them to do was send it to the legislatures. They also said that I told him that I wanted him to decide the election. I want you to decide. I didn't say that. They made up the story. It's not true. You know, he could act. This is what he wants. Like, I want equal time. That's what he thinks this is. This is his equal time. Here's a good idea, asshole. Do this under oath. Otherwise, it's not equal time. I wanted him to send it up to the legislatures. So it goes back to Pennsylvania, state legislatures. Mm -hmm. And if they see the same kind of fraud, and if they see the same kind of irregularities that I saw, I mean, he had one irregularity that everybody knows about that nobody wanted to do anything. And that's that. Many of these changes were not made by state legislatures. Oh, it's the whole like Emergency Powers Act. He he declared a national emergency under the pandemic and so did all these other states. It's silly. They were made by local politicians. They just changed everything. They extended hours. They did many, many things. Yes, because they had the right to do that under the Emergency Powers Act. That's against the law. No, it isn't. And that happened in- The law is actually dictated by the, uh, the de declaration of an emergency. You did it. The governors did it. In many instances. But we don't even get into that. We no, because if you did, some asshole like me would have to come up to you and go, hey, dickhead, you signed a national emergency uh, declaration, right? Yeah. Okay. That reinforces the nation the state emergency declarations so they get funds to deal with things like COVID. Yeah. Okay. There are all sorts of things that get more lenient when you're dealing with an emergency because people shouldn't have to go to an actual polling place if there's been a tornado during a tornado. 
They should have options. And if you have to bring the legislature back together to make that happen, you'd never ha- and nobody would ever be able to vote in the plain states. We should. But it was illegal what they did. They extended hours. They no, it wasn't. Cut hours. These are still legal votes. They let people do whatever the hell they wanted to do. <laughs> In some cases, they went to the legislatures. They were unable to get approvals. And then they did it anyway. So you're not allowed to do that. Do you know that even if a judge rules against you, you can't, even a judge can't change it. A judge can't, a politician can't, the senators can't. Yeah, only uh, whoever has control of Gort, the alien android, can do it. Otherwise, they'll, they won't say Cladu Vrata Nikto and he'll destroy everything with his, la- his uh, eye laser. Nobody. Sorry, his Jewish eye laser. The only thing that can change it are the state legislatures. And many, many cases that we're talking about, determinative, meaning election changing. Because <laughs> we did much better in the second election than we did in the first. Got millions and millions of more votes. Much better. Because millions of people could vote. Better. Somebody said, how do you do with the second one compared to the first? I said, we did much better. I was told if we got the same number of votes. This is him. This is his conversation with the dude that sold him all the votes. 63 million that we had it made. So uh, we bought 64 million votes and uh, it didn't turn out to be, you know, enough. And and I want my money back. <laughs> Again, like I said, this is what? this is Trump's Yelp review of uh, of the company that provided him with the election fraud that he was looking for. I was told that by the best pollsters. We got millions and millions more, more than any sitting president has ever got. Not even <clears throat> close. Well, I mean, because of the volume of humans in the United States growing over time, but also uh, how many did uh, Biden get? Yeah, more than any other challenger in history. And they say we lost, uh, don't. Yes, they do. Everyone does. Uh, don't believe it. Well, we know you have to say you don't believe it. Otherwise, you're going to go to jail in Georgia. So they say that. So remember this. So they said Mike Pence can't do anything. Then right after this whole event. They started working so that they could make what they said true, because the truth is he could have sent it back to the state legislatures. And they're having a hard time, for whatever reason, getting it approved. After this speech, they'll probably get it approved. The rhinos and the Democrats. There we go. Yes, that's, again, a little popcorn for the rhinos. Thomas Jefferson. Did anybody ever hear of Thomas Jefferson? So he was a vice president also, among other things, many things. But Thomas Jefferson had the same exact problem in the early 1800s with Georgia, which was unable to properly count its votes. (laughs) Yeah. Back in the days of horse-drawn carriages. Hear ye, hear ye, the great state of Georgia is unable to properly count our votes. Thomas Jefferson said, oh, we're going to take your votes. We're not sending them back. We're taking them. And he took the votes and they got elected. He and his wonderful president. So I said to Mike, if you do this, you can be Thomas Jefferson. (laughs) Dude, you just basically described a crime. And then after you too could have uh, offspring with one of your slaves. It all went down. I looked at him one day and I said, Mike. You're a pussy. Hate to say this, but you know Thomas Jefferson. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. Jefferson was a straight hottie. That is, is, I mean, he he had great hair. Occasionally I will wear my ponytail low in in what I call the Jefferson. Look at our country now. Look at our country now. And I'm not sure, maybe the state legislatures wouldn't have acted, but I think they would have because they were looking at a lot of things. And right now we Uh have the nastiest inflation that we've ever seen. We have a war in Ukraine with perhaps millions and millions of people dying in the end. I think it's going to be a lot more people than people. When you look at these cities that are being ruthlessly and horribly bombed to hell, Mm-hmm. You're talking about tens of thousands. By your buddy Vladimir Putin. Tens of people dying. They'll say, yes, two people died. One was hurt. 
and yet you have buildings pouring down all over and bombs being dropped. No, no, thousands and thousands of people are dying. By the way, what kind of an asshole thinks the Ukrainians are lowering the numbers of dead killed when the Russians strike an apartment block or a hospital? They're evacuating people when the bombing starts. They get a lot of people out. Not everybody leaves. They don't know exactly how many have died, but they, they tell who are confirmed to have died who were in the building. The Ukrainians have no reason whatsoever to downplay the number of civilian deaths. What are they trying to do? Make Russia look better? And perhaps it's going to lead to World War III because the way we're handling it, we just gave $40 billion on top of another $16 billion, so we're in for $56 billion. And, you know, we want to help those people. We have to also save our country, by the way, but we want to help those people. And it's horrible. It's horrible, horrible what happened. But when you look at Europe and Germany and France and all these other countries, they're given a tiny fraction, a tiny, tiny fraction of what we're giving. Uh -huh. We're giving 56 billion and they're giving a few billion dollars. And they're the ones that are affected much more so. Our economy is the biggest country, uh, biggest economy on earth. China is second and it's half. And that's with its puffed numbers. But it should have never happened. If I were president, that would never have happened. A hundred percent would have never happened. Well, why, I, I would love to, for him to go in depth about this. Why wouldn't he have done it? Because he was afraid of you? Because you would have nuked him? Because he, you would have just given it to him? That's my theory. Right? And I got to know Putin very well, and we talked. Oh, we know. You, uh, did he let you keep the rubber glove for old time's sake? About it, and I know that he liked it. He liked it, but he knew the consequences were going to be tremendous. Oh, oh, yeah. You mean the same con? He just sent, somehow thought that the consequences would change once you left office, and they didn't. So whose fault is that? Tremendous. He understood that. And he would have never, ever done it. If so he was just shocked to find that America, America's resolve and our alignment with NATO was stronger than he thought because he's a dumbass. The election weren't rigged and stolen. You wouldn't have had any problems with Ukraine being attacked viciously. This is a vicious thing when you bomb out cities like that. Who would think that that's possible? <clears throat> well, obviously, Vladimir Putin. Things like that happened in World War II. Better be careful because the way we're dealing, you'll end up in the next world war. It's so, so bad. But who would have ever thought it's even possible? As sure as you're sitting there, it never would have happened. And China going into Taiwan was a dead story. It was never going to happen. Now they fly bombers over Taiwan. The other no, they don't. Day, 28 bombers flew right over the middle of Taiwan. He no, they didn't. Not even close. They fly in this upper corner of the of the air zone as a like, aha, we're over here. They have not flown straight over the fucking country. That's nonsense. He's got something going. I mean, the only thing is when he looks at Russia and he looks at what's happening, it's a lot tougher. But now it looks like Russia, unfortunately, it's been so vicious and so violent and so horrible. Uh, they're starting to win a lot of battles, a lot of area. They're taking a lot of area. And uh, we're responsible for giving billions and billions and billions, and it's just not going the right way. What they ought to be doing is working out some kind of a deal where they stop, where they stop. Yeah, where they stop and just give Russia a third of the country. And they stop now instead of... Before Russia loses. Doing what they're doing. They're handling it so badly, and uh, you'll see. I mean, ultimately, I heard the firepower is 34 times greater than Ukraine. 34 times. That's not a situation. I was listening to a very, actually, a very good general. Some of our generals are terrible, as you probably have heard, but we have very good ones, too. <laughs> I like, uh, you know, don't forget I wiped out the caliphate. Yeah, that's why an ISIS-K suicide bomber is the one who set off the bomb in Afghanistan. Syria. We not wiped out the entire ISIS caliphate in Syria. 
in, oh, just in Syria then. I see. So the one in uh, the the section of it in Iraq and and the surrounding area that's still there. Okay, good to know. It out one hundred percent. Remember when I said, all right, that's enough. Let the other countries finish it up. Let's bring them with. We're at ninety nine percent. And the fake news media said, he didn't do 100%. I said, all right, we'll do it. Boom. It was 70%, and the, the uh, generals talked him into staying. General Raisin Cane. Do you remember General Raisin Cane? Oh, Kane, God, the, the Raisin general. Cane story. I heard it was going to take three years. I said, General Cane, how long is it going to take? I can do it in two weeks, sir. And he did. No, he didn't. We got some great generals. We just don't see them on television. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. But we are now disrespected all over the world. No, we're not. We have Iran that was ready to fold and do anything I wanted. We had sanctions on them, the likes of which nobody's ever seen. They would have done anything, and instead they're on their way to becoming a tremendous nuclear power. <laughs> and we better act very quickly because there's no negotiating with them. Oh, okay. So there's no negotiating with it. What, what, uh, then what? We're just going to bomb them? We're, we're going to nuke Iran now? That's what we're so basically you're running on McCain's ticket. Bomb, 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 Iran. That's right. That's These are religious zealots. OK, yeah. So there's no there's, this is basically Trump is making the Putin argument against Ukraine, but towards the Iranians. Adorable. These are not people that you can negotiate with. I got no, no, no. You got it. You can't negotiate with these folks. You just got to. Uh, well, then if they're going to develop nukes, this is the premise. And you're making the argument that you can't negotiate with them. What's the other option then? Murder, it seems. Got along very well with Kim Jong Un, as you probably heard when I first came in. <laughs> President Obama, Barack Hussein Obama. Has anyone ever heard of him? He told me that the biggest problem we had was North Korea. I said, "Have you ever called him?" By now? the way, no, he didn't. Oh, no? well, actually, he tried 14 different times, and they were unable to do it because Kim Jong-un didn't want to talk to him, but he talked. Yeah, but he talked to me. Talked to me and I he didn't want to talk to the black guy. I knew him very well, and this was going to be a nuclear war, and it turned out to be a nothing. It was nothing. We got along just fine. He, even he just kept quiet and kept building nukes and stacking arms. Participated in the Olympics. He participated in the Olympics. <laughs> and we got along. Did, did, how did, did he place? Did Kim Jong-un get a silver medal in, in the hot dog eating contest? Very well. And now he's acting up again. He's sending ballistic missiles all over the place. Here we go. But we got <laughs> along very well. It was a little nasty at the beginning, if you remember. Remember? He said, uh, I've got a red oh, the button. button on my desk and I can use it. I said, but I have a much bigger red button and my button works and I can use it better than you. Yes, I could... Uh murder millions of your civilians with a touch of a button. <clears throat> yeah, he won the low jump. So we need the right people. We're just not respected anywhere in the world anymore. Yeah, Kim Jong-un is just not respecting us the way we don't have the respect of him and Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin anymore. Those guys just don't seem to like us. Oh, they go to the summits and the other Leaders are saying, what the hell is going on? You got to understand, I know them all. Macron, I know every one of them. None of them call you anymore. You haven't spoken to any of them since you left office, and none of them want to. I mean, the video of them laughing at you is pretty great. Angela, Angela really took advantage of our country. Now she's been replaced by a guy that is smart also. She was very smart. And uh, we, we paid a big price. They were ripping us off. Just like China, everybody ripped us off. We made so many trade deals, so many deals, so many military deals, saving billions and billions. I put tariffs on China. Hundreds of billions of dollars was paid to us. Oh, hundreds. It, remember, it was 50 billion? Now, yeah. Over a short period of time, I gave $28 billion of it to China because... Oh, you did? To China? Because 28 billion of the China money to the farmers. Because okay, yeah, thanks for clarifying. Because the farmers were... To the Chinese farmers? ...being hurt so badly. Yeah, the Chinese farmers? In trade by what China was doing. They were taking advantage of our country. And I said to our secretary... Okay, th let's, let's just recap. We, we're like a third of the way through this horse shit. And this is a... a, a it's dull, for one. It's, it's just, you know, 
normally he's self-congratulatory, but he seems miserable. So it seems like he's it's just a whining fest. And then he's just rehashing the same. I mean, we not that's not surprising. He always bitches about the same things. But this in particular seems to be just his reaction to the the sort of the the noose tightening around him. Area of agriculture. Sonny Purdue, good guy. I said, Sonny, I said, Sonny, what's the most, what do you think the number is that we've been hurt by? Oh, God, this is the same. He's just telling the same shit. The farmers that have been hurt by what China's done with their horrible That's the same thing. Us. And it was really terrible what they were doing. 28 billion. I said, that's okay. And I gave the farmers 28 billion out of the massive hundreds of billions of dollars that we got from the tariffs and taxes that I put on China. Oh, and I will tell you, in our history, there's been no president that ever took in even 10 cents from China. Bullshit. Like, and again, what are you, what are you talking about? In our history, there's been no pres president who's taken in even 10 cents from China. Hmm. Uh, let's see if I can grab a, a number. Hold on one second for you, if I may. Mm -hmm. Let's see, 2016. Yeah. <laughs> Obama put on a, and this is, by the way, um, Wall Street Journal was pissed about this. Obama front runs Trump on China. The new 522% steel tariff will hurt U.S. companies. Worse may be coming. The Obama administration may not sound like Donald Trump when talking about trade with China, but it isn't above using protectionism for political gain. On Tuesday, the U.S. Commerce Department increased a tariff, increased, by the way, it was already there, a tariff on dumped Chinese cold rolled steel to 522%, a move that will hurt American manufacturers who need the steel to remain competitive. This is their argument for, you know, buying cheap steel from China. Um, the tariff might score some populist points with voters in an election year, and it may also ploy, be a ploy to get lawmakers to ratify the Trans-Pacific Partnership trade agreement before Obama leaves office. That's the that's the plan. Not 10 cents. This, that's May of 2016. Um, let's see. Let's see. What tariffs? Uh, let's see. Let me go to here now. There you go. Uh, Obama tire tariffs. Uh, in 2009, Obama imposed a 35% tariff on tires uh, imported from China in an effort to boost the domestic tire industry, which is being overrun by less expensive Chinese tires. The uh, United Steelworkers Union, which represents tire plant workers, had complained to the U.S. International Trade Commission about a surge in Chinese tire imports that had caused over 4,000 American tire workers to lose their jobs. From 2004 to 2008, USW said Chinese tire imports had increased by 215%, so much so that by 2008, 46 million tires in the U.S. were coming from China, compared to 15 million in 2004. Domestic tire production dropped by 25%. Did it work? At his 2012 State of the Union address, Obama declared that over a thousand Americans are working today because we stopped a surge in Chinese tires. A 2012 uh, Patterson, uh, Peterson Inter Institute study by Gary Huffbauer Huffar, and Sean Lowry suggested the most generous assessment might be say that tariffs saved a maximum of 1,200 jobs. That would be over a thousand. But that the savings came at a high cost, right? Estimated that the price increase on non-Chinese tire imports added up to 817 million, and U.S. tire makers' price increase as a result of the tariffs was 295 million. All told, the calculated each of those 1,200 saved jobs ending up costing $900,000 each to investors. 
The tariff did reduce the number of tires Americans bought from China, but it meant that the U.S. bought more tires from other countries that weren't China, like Canada, South Korea, Japan, Mexico, and Taiwan. Yeah, but they weren't dumping them. And again, not 10 cents for the record, not 10 cents. I took in hundreds of billions of dollars, saved our steel industry, saved other industries. By just keeping the tariffs that Obama had put in place. And now, and now, if you read the papers. Yeah, who reads the papers anymore? Biden wants to end the tariffs on China. Oh, does he? China. You do that, that's the end of your steel industry. Biden wants to end the tariffs on China. Mm. Oops, hold on. China tariffs. What do you what do you think the chances are? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, easing tariffs. There you go. Um, this is what he's talking about. Hold on. And this is a scoop. This is three days ago. Scoop. Scoop. Biden leans towards easing some of Trump's China tariffs. Not the ones, of course, that uh, Ivanka Dodge. Uh, let's see. Oh, Obama, uh, sorry, President Biden in the Oval Office meeting last week with key members of his cabinet indicating he's leaning towards removing some products from the Trump administration's China tariff list. People familiar with the matter tell Axios. With inflation at a 40-year high of 8.6%, Biden and his top officials are desperate to show action on bringing down prices, even if it makes them appear weak on China. Inflation is okay, blah, blah, blah. But Biden's plans to exempt some products covered by Trump's Section 301 tariffs risk aggravating the labor movement. Um, which one? Driving the news. Biden is scheduled to address the FLCIO's constitutional convention in Philadelphia today with remarks aimed at celebrating the partnership. But in private conversations with administration officials, labor representatives have warned that the White House against relaxing any of the tariffs. What we're hearing, Biden is leaning towards ordering the office of the U.S. Trade Representative to run a formal exclusion process to determine if some consumer items, such as bicycles, should be exempted from the Section 301 tariffs. He's le less likely to include big industrial items like steel and aluminum in the process. Biden gave some indication of, th of that thinking last Tuesday in a meeting with his key cabinet officials, according to people familiar with the discussions. A potential announcement is expected as early as this month. No decision has been made. The president is discussing with his team and on ensuring the tariffs are aligned with our economic and strategic priorities, such as safeguarding the interests of workers and critical industries. Yeah, again, steel and aluminum are not covered. Um, not He's not lifting those. Uh, let's see, put... Biden on political notice last week, they expect him to keep in all of Trump's tariffs in place, writing that our government must act in national interest to strengthen our economy for the future. Most For most of his presidency, Biden has been reluctant to let any daylight enter between him and the labor movement, which forms the backbone of his political coalition. The extent of union anger, da, 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 between the lines, the overall impact of removing all of Trump's tariffs on imports from China, according to one study, might lower the consumer price index by only 0.26 of a percentage point. That's fueled a fierce internal debate, pitting economic officials against one uh, against other key members of the administration, like U.S. Trade Representative Catherine Tai, who want to maintain leverage on China. Yeah, she's she's serious about this stuff. She wants more tariffs. Flashback. For several months, officials have privately debated the political and economic merits of lifting some of Trump's tariffs, with the Biden telling reporters in Japan in late May that he was considering rolling some of them back. We did not impose any of those tariffs. They were imposed by the previous administration, and they are under consideration. The White House officials are depressed about and resigning to their prospects of meeting lowering prices before November. Biden is deeply frustrated with his team's proposed addresses for sky-high gas prices. He recently questioned the value of heading to Iowa to promote biofuels to help lower gas prices. Um, okay, better not. Yeah, he's not doing steel or any of that shit. It's just like fucking bicycles, whatever. It's the end of so many different businesses. Yeah, bicycles are done. It's a shame. Getting hundreds of billions of dollars, and it was going a lot higher. Yeah, it was going to be hundreds of hundreds of billions. Then we had a, an event that took place on November 3rd that was very unfortunate. Let's be clear, this is not a congressional investigation, this horrible situation. This is how far afield he's gotten and is rambling. He went back to his teleprompter. Wasting everyone's time. This is a theatrical production of partisan political fiction that's getting these terrible, terrible ratings, and they're going crazy. They're going crazy. The unselects tried to use these tactics, and if they did, in a real court of law, everyone involved would be sanctioned and would be disbarred. If they were lawyers, they'd be disbarred for what they're doing. No, this is a closing statement. They not at all. Is a that's that's where it's, why it's the argument part. 
That's what you do. You review the evidence for the jury because you've been making the case all along. One-sided witch hunt. They would be totally disbarred. We have nobody to even speak. Yes, you're voiceless. It's so sad. We can't even speak. In fact, what I do... Sure you can. Show up and uh, I, I guarantee if Trump said, I will appear under oath and speak for as long as you want. Hillary did it with Benghazi. I can do 12 hours, 15. I can go all night. Whatever you need. Um, I just need a couple of trips to the John to empty the, the diaper and blaze a rail and we'll get back at it. Do as I put it on Truth Social. And anybody in Truth Social? The hottest. The hottest nothing on the internet. The it's hottest the what? hottest thing. I'm not a fan of Twitter. I think Twitter is bots and fake accounts. I don't like Twitter. Truth <laughs> Social is uh, the hottest thing. And we put it on Truth Social. And uh, uh -huh. you see what's going on, but it's no coincidence that all of the same people who staged the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax are now pushing this insurrection hoax. And they're pushing it. The same people, grotesque and ludicrous narratives that just happened on, and as to what happened on January 6th, it was a simple protest it got out of hand and I yeah that's all it was we'll say one thing they don't talk about they never show the size of the crowd i believe it was the largest <laughs> number of people i've ever spoken to i'm that he's still pissed they're not they they won't give him credit for the crowd size i'm not talking about the very small percentage of people that went down to the yeah those guys get the ones that beat cops near to death and took a shit in the rotunda and stole a laptop and tried to sell it to Russia and were chanting hang Mike Pence and busting out windows and, you know, <laughs> busting in doors and threatening people's lives and saying they were going to murder Nancy Pelosi. They get all the attention. What about all the run-of-the-mill maggots that showed up in D.C. and then just went the fuck home because the speech was horrible? Capital, many of whom did nothing wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's why they left. And they're paying a big price because of this horrible situation that's taking place. I'm talking about the crowd that I spoke before. And some people went down long before I spoke. But the crowd that I spoke before was, I believe, the largest crowd. And I've spoken in front of big crowds. This is a big crowd. I've spoken in front of very... No, no, it isn't. Very big crowd. They already showed the ground. We, we, we know there's huge gaps in the back. It's, the, the turnout's probably going to be bigger for other people speaking at the event. That was the largest crowd of people that I've ever spoken before. Well, enjoy it, because it's just been dwindling ever since. And I will it literally, pe you peaked on January 6th. Congratulations. Tell you, and they totally did this too last week. I said that was a crowd where there was unbelievable love and patriotism in the air. Uh -huh. People were holding hands. They were listening. They were crying. They were there over a rigged election. And they took what I said, and they said that his, he was saying, I was referring to the people that walked into the Capitol. You literally said, we love you. You're very special to those very people. And no, I wasn't. I was referring to the speech. The speech was... The largest I've never seen. I think that was the largest number of people that I've ever spoken before. Okay, so it was um, bigger than your inauguration and still smaller than Obama's. Gotcha. You, you never hear that. They never show pictures of it. We have a few pictures, but I believe it was the largest number and nobody likes to talk about it. People. Who cares? This is like the unselect committee complaint. Nobody gives a fuck. Look, look at what happened on that day. I mean, he is David Brent. This is, I mean, he's President David Brent from the, the British office. Um, some of you are going to be made redundant. Um, we are going to join, uh, Neil's going to take over our branch and some of you um, are going to lose your jobs. There is some good no news though. I'm being promoted. People were there for a right reason, because we have a country. And if you don't have fair and free elections, you don't have a country. And they love our country. You need borders, you need elections. And they were there. And no. And you need folding chairs. And you need Diet Dr. Pepper and a giant tumbler. And you need a maggot hat. And then you need to 
listen to the same drivel again and then pack up and go the fuck home while friends of yours try to destroy democracy. Nobody ever mentions that. They never show it. I have never seen it on television where they have a helicopter shot of Washington with numbers of, I won't say it. You're saying the airspace wasn't open? Because if I say it, I'll get wiped out. You know, it's very interesting. On July 4th, I gave a speech. By the way, the audience has checked out. He's got to say something like, you guys love God again, or he's never going to get another round of applause till the end. Years ago at the mall, and it was the same mall that uh, Alvita's great, uh, the great Martin Luther King Jr. gave. And the, the structure is identical. You have the Washington Monument, you have the wall, you have the Lincoln Monument. But the structure, the pools, everything. Yeah, the pools. And Dr. King gave his speech, and it was great. The I had a dream speech. It was great. How You think? Oh, that's nice of you. How very charitable. How good was that? But they showed the picture, and it was massive. Tremendous numbers of people. They said it was a million people, one million people. If this mother, he's going to go, I, I think mine was bigger. And then I gave my speech and they showed the same thing. It's hard to believe many, many decades later, but it's identical architecture, identical pools. You look at it, the Lincoln, my, everything was identical, but it was many years later. I gave my speech. So his, they said, one million people. Now, my pictures, we're exactly the same. Jesus Christ. The, can you imagine being this petty? But the people were slightly closer together. They were <laughs> That's what it was. It was that there was more love in his crowd than in the MLK speech. There was, there were, people had elbow room. Were more compact, but exactly the same. But so he had more people packed into the same amount of space. That's exactly what he's saying. Holy shit. I mean... How do you, how the fuck, how are you that petty? But there were more people. They were tighter together, if you look at it. Oh my God. He had more people than MLK. That's the, Jesus Christ. Donald Trump has 25,000 people today. <laughs> so Dr. Martin Luther King had a million, and that's fine. Donald Trump, with more people, had 25,000. Jesus Christ. Oh, this is so gross. He is now claiming that his speech had more people than MLK's. And the reason is, is because he believes the same amount of ground was covered, but his people were packed in tighter than the people seeing MLK. Fucking hell. This is, <laughs> this is so gross. Uh, yeah, this is brutal. Can you imagine being, like, buying a ticket to this shit? By the way, you're watching House Parks Mega Worldwide. We take this, uh, you know, these these speeches and we go through them long form so that I'm never, never accused of taking things out of context, which is what, A, he did about footage around, he was saying that they were doing around Jan 6, but at the same time, 2,000 mules can do it, and that they're just being honest. And I have it up in my office. And it says 1,025,000. But that's what we have to put up with. And Alvita understands that. She understands that. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's, it's Dr. King's granddaughter or whatever who's there. Whew. And his speech was great. My I have to say my speech was better. I don't think so. I better not play with that one. He wants to. Good. What an asshole. Yeah, what was the big quote from Trump's speech at that thing? Who's Velvia? Alvia. It's like, this isn't even petty. He's not making a point, anything. What does it mean? I don't know. This is, City Powell's been dis dis disbarred from the state of Texas. Nice. It's a start. I almost feel bad for the dude behind the pole. I mean, the guy taking the pictures. He's not behind a pole. There's a black gap behind him. He's filming Trump. He's taking pictures. I better not play with that one. I made a nice speech, but I liked his speech better. If it were an insurrection that took place at the Capitol, you would have known it very soon. 
They would have, these were strong people. These were great patriots. They were policemen. They were firemen. They were soldiers. They were sailors. Oh, I see. So they, because they didn't win, it wasn't an insurrection because it failed. It's not, it's only an insurrection if you succeed. There were no guns. I heard. Yes, there were. They didn't have one gun. Well, you heard wrong. Nobody was killed. <laughs> well, one of uh, one of the MAGA people that was there was stomped to death by your own people. Except for a one. And Ashley Babbitt was shot. A young woman named Ashley Babbitt who was viciously shot. And in my opinion, for absolutely no reason, by a police officer. They wanted. They wanted to keep this officer. Sh Somebody just yelled murder in the back. Shielded. They didn't want anyone to know his name. Now, because your supporters threaten people's lives. When it happens on the other side, oh, they plaster, they plaster pictures up. I've never seen anything, but they wanted to shield him. And then all of a sudden he's doing an interview on like NBC fake news and or one of the networks, he's doing, oh, he's doing an interview. He didn't want to be sure. He was so proud of what he did. I watched him. I said, this guy's actually proud of what he did. He shot her. Point blank, just shot her. That's all he did. She wasn't climbing through a fucking window that had just been busted, as he, that he was guarding, that had been barricaded to keep the mob out while they evacuated members of Congress, which was his duty on that day. He just shot her cold. Like... Basically, like, a, she was walking across a parking lot. And she's the only one that died. We didn't have any... Yes, because once she was shot, nobody else came through the fucking window. Guns, we didn't have any... There were no guns there. Yes, there were. And it's a shame what's happening. I'll say as bluntly and plainly as possible that this malicious partisan narrative is a big, monstrous lie. And I believe that's why... CNN is not using the term anymore because they, they're looking at the results of what happened in the election. They're not using that term. There is not one shred. Yeah, they want to call it Trump's lie, not the big lie. There, the, the, I guess the uh, illusion there is that you are not big anymore. Of evidence. It's not a big lie. It's kind of Trump's lame lie. Support. It's lost its bigness over time. The deranged conspiracy theory, the unselects are pushing. They know it, just like the fully debunked Russia, Russia, Russia hoax. Now it's fully debunked. Yeah, totally, fully debunked. I mean, never got to look at your uh, your uh, finances uh, in the Mueller report. And, and Barr, of course, even though there was a recommendation in the Mueller report that you could be charged, uh, since Barr wouldn't allow it, it didn't go any further. The unselects really cared about the truth, and if they did, they would immediately release all the video of the Capitol surveillance cameras that Pelosi has been hiding for nearly two years. Well, some of those show where Pence hid while your supporters were trying to murder him. So they're not going to release that because in the future, if there's anything similar to this, the uh, our enemies, foreign and domestic, will know where they take the vice president. They would investigate why the Biden administration has supposedly not been able to identify the attempted bomber. Remember the pipe bomber? They have his picture. They have everything. They know what he looks like and they never. Uh, he or she found him or both. Something which the committee and the media mysteriously, they don't mention the pipe bomber anymore. This guy. Has yeah, they do. They talk about it. Quite a lot. A pipe bomb. But he wasn't from that group that was listening to that speech. He was from a different group. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You know this person personally? You're aware of their motives? And they don't want to talk about him. If oh, they don't? Why not? What about him? You seem to know a lot about this person. Fill us in. The committee cared about the truth. They would reveal... Everything the U.S. government knows about the individuals who have not been arrested despite being caught on video urging the crowd to press forward, including people like Ray Epps. Oh, shit. Congratulations, Ray Epps. You now get um, 
to sue a private citizen who allegedly has money for defamation. Reyes, go in, everybody. Go in, everybody. They don't um, touch No, he, he told the guy that the cops were just doing their job. Don't do it. Tim. And the day before, he said, go to the Capitol, if I'm not mistaken. Go and arrest people that didn't even know, that didn't even go in. But Ray Epps and others that were doing the same thing, they leave them alone. They would tell us what... Right, the, uh, I think it's fascinating that um, he wants Ray Epps arrested because the, uh, the idea is that Ray Epps told people to go to the Capitol. This motherfucker told people to go to the Capitol. Ray Epps didn't say charge in there and beat cops. As a matter of fact, he told... Um, right before the surge, he told one of the Proud Boy leaders th the cops were just doing their job to not do it. If Trump had been down there, he might have seen that in person. By Nancy Pelosi rejected 10,000 National Guard troops that I recommended be there because I heard it was going to be a big crowd. Yeah, and a big, violent, psychotic crowd. I didn't set it up. No, I don't know. You know these people. But I heard it was going to be a big crowd. So many I didn't set it up. People said, oh, we're going to be there. We're going to be there. And I said to the Secretary of Defense and others in the room, it's been verified now. They said 10 to 20,000. I thought I said 10, but they said, no, you said from 10 to 20,000. If you had 200 National Guardsmen or military, January 6th would not have been January 6th as we know it. Right. Uh, and now we know anytime Trump has a rally anywhere near D.C., it should be surrounded by soldiers. What? But as you know, Nancy Pelosi is in charge of security of the Capitol along. No, she isn't. Along with the mayor of Washington, D.C. And they turned it down. They didn't want it. I believe the mayor turned it down in writing. There's a letter out there somewhere. She yeah, somewhere. Turned it down in writing. Yeah, she turned it down in writing. She wrote it back. She got a letter and then she... Now, how can we be guilty if we wanted to have as much as 10,000 or maybe 20,000, but as much as 10,000 troops in the Capitol? Because you considered them friendlies and they were going to help you carry out the insurrection. And because they weren't there, it's one of the reasons why it failed. Because the... National Guard troops you were wanting to bring in, you thought the you could in, you could invoke the Insurrection Act and order the National Guard to separate people inside the Capitol and stop the proceedings, if not attack them openly. You mean we're causing an insurrection? But by the way, let's get ten thousand troops <laughs> that like us from Texas. No, it doesn't work that way. No, it is a fake. This is a fake story. No different than Russia, 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 Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. I can't, I can't imagine being in this fucking audience listening to this blather. How about I got impeached for a perfect phone call? Oh, motherfucker. To Ukraine. Congratulations on your victory. Let's impeach him. It's a disgrace. This has never happened. Ever happened. Nothing. Yeah. Yes, no one has ever threatened the leader of another country on the congratulations call that they were going to be denied military aid unless they did something to help them, the president, sitting president win against his political opponent by creating a false investigation in a foreign country. That's true. Nothing like this has ever happened. I get a lot of credit. People say, how the hell do you take it? I say, do I have a choice? Do I have a choice? And most importantly, they would expose the blatant rigging and stealing of the 2020 election because they know what happened. They know what happened. The Democrats know what happened. Listen to the applause in that place. That was the that's the first applause break. Is that the blatant stealing of the election? That's 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 where this crowd is. Better than the Republicans. It's not the full crowd. Guys like Mitch McConnell who are weak and political hacks. Instead of fighting, they just want to get on to the next. He's actually happy with Biden. They say, because he can do his little thing. He can be the leader or the semi-leader, because he's not a leader. <laughs> when Republicans retake control of the semi-leader. Congress, they should turn the table and the Democrats show trial and immediately launch a full investigation into the egregious abuse of power that has taken place in the name of January 6th. It's in the name of... <laughs> Look at the misery. There it is. All right, we're going to, I'm going to wrap this up for tonight so that I can get on with my fucking life. But um, I think I will pick this up um, the next time we gather. Um, uh, radio shows tomorrow morning. And then, of course, the 
uh, I, I might be able to, you know, bust in in the afternoon and kind of finish off some of this or do it late in, in the evening tomorrow night or something like that. Um, if not Monday, uh, we'll finish it out. But it's like, I mean, it's going to be hard for me not to just like watch the rest of it and go, OK, here's the one big thing. Yeah, I'm going to need a bigger bag of fucking popcorn if we're going to keep doing this anyways. Jesus Christ, this is boring. This went on for another fucking 45 minutes. Jesus, just uh, get over yourself. And this, by the way, this is the, you know, the like King MAGA, like King Ultra MAGA 2024. These people, the people lining up to like watch him. I don't know if there's a, there's not a chat on here, but the RSBN chat I'm sure was full of like, like slam dunk, totally true, blah, blah, blah. blah. But even those folks are are getting bored and leaving. This is just tiresome. And you know, like DeSantis and and Cotton and some of these guys are laughing their asses off watching this. Knowing full well they'll be able to like 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 well, Trump's not gonna run anyways, but any like any hope of that is fading fast. And they're like, look at this doofus. And again, I would argue, uh, maybe there'll be another rally. Oh, God, there may be another rally tomorrow. Jesus, like we have to stack these things up. Hey, I'm committed to, go, you know, getting through them when when they happen. But Jesus, we can skip a few because uh, it's just, ugh, it's so boring. And it does nothing. There is no there there. Stop it, it's torture. I vacuumed so I didn't have to listen to Trump. Oh, my God, it's boring gibberish. I know, it just... Like, and this is the dude who's supposedly, you know, the standard bearer of the of the Republican Party. Total, you know, he's got a stranglehold on the electorate. He calls the winners, even when he doesn't. This is this is the you know the once and future king of the Republican Party. This is torturous. And again, everything that they say about Biden, and they're like, he's, he's cognitively losing it and can't think straight, but. We see this every time. Oh, God, I need a nap. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. This is House Sparks Mega Worldwide. Um, normally, it's a, it's a lot more fun, but I, I, I mean, you can't polish a turd. This, this speech is horrifyingly bad. This is bad. <laughs> this is so stunningly lame. I almost feel like I wish Don Jr. would just go out there and read the same thing. So at least we'd have Coke Energy version of this. And it's like, it's like he's on a hard fade. Yeah, I alone could fix it. Yeah, this is rough.